Hi, this is Mark from Skywagons University. A quick video about intercooling. I mean, a lot of different cars and engines, boats, turbocharged things have intercoolers, and I've found they've been very misunderstood. So what an intercooler does, overall, it is an air radiator. So it cools air. So, turbocharger. The air comes into the intake, goes through the turbocharger, which is driven by the exhaust, so it's very hot. So the air gets heated and pressurized and jammed into the engine to give you artificial manifold pressure at high altitude. So you think, that's cool, but it's hot air. So if it's hot, it's not dense. If it isn't dense, it doesn't burn easily. So you want to cool it back down. So what an intercooler does is the air comes in, goes to the turbocharger, gets pressurized, gets heated up, then on its way to the induction system, it goes through the intercooler, which is the air radiator. So the air comes in here, just flying along, just normal passage of air, comes in here and flows through the intercooler, cooling the induction air, which is coming up through here. So then now the air is still pressurized by the turbo, but it isn't hot anymore. So it goes into the engine and it burns more efficiently because it's denser. So the trick to it is every 15 degrees of cooling that the intercooler gives the air is an inch of manifold pressure that you don't see on the manifold pressure gauge. So, if you were at 5,000 feet, it might cool it 10, 12 degrees. So it's hardly anything. It's like three quarters of an inch of manifold pressure not shown on the gauge. But if you were at 15,000 feet where it's very cold and the intercooler is being very efficient, you might cool the air pre and post intercooler 60 degrees. And if I'm getting my math right, 60 degrees is four lots of 15 degrees. So that means that you're seeing four inches of manifold pressure not on the gauge that the engine is being subjected to. So if you want 30 inches, or say 26 inches of manifold pressure, you've actually got to put 22 inches on the gauge knowing there is an undisclosed four inches being given to the engine. So if you keep it at 24 and you keep climbing and you keep intercooling, you're actually going to be gaining manifold pressure to the point where it looks like it's doing 26, but it's really doing 30 inches of manifold pressure. So this plane doesn't have one, but you can get a gauge called an intercooler, tempera an intercooler temperature differential gauge, and it will show you how much you're cooling it and how many inches you must pull back. So to maintain the 26 inches on climb out or whatever you've set it at, as the air gets more cooled and more efficient with altitude, you pull back on the throttle to maintain the power setting, which seems a bit strange, but it just means you can run the engine more efficiently. You can, with GAMI injectors as well, you can have more accurate fuel calibration. Your TBO is, you're more likely to get to TBO because your cylinders are cooled more efficiently. So you're just not pumping preheated air straight into the engine from the turbo, you're cooling it first. So the induction system is cooler. So it's just overall better. And there are several companies that do this. There's Riley, Turbo Plus, and you can always tell if a plane is intercooled because it'll have a little extra induction hole. So there's air coming in here, uh, that's intake air, that's going to be burnt by the engine. This is cooling air, this is going to be cooled by the radiator. So that is what an intercooler is. Um, it's very similar to an oil cooler, except it's just got air going through it instead of oil. So that is uh, a breakdown of intercooling. And if anybody out there knows something more scientific about them than that, Please feel free to comment, but for now, that's all I'm going to be saying about the intercoolers on these planes. So thanks very much for watching, and um, subscribe, click on the little bell, and Mark Pilkington, Skywagons University, signing off.